Post-occupancy evaluation is really important because it helps you understand the environmental performance of your building. So if you've got good energy performance, that shows that there's been a considered design, considered construction and considered commissioning process. So this is why it's really important. It also allows you to catch any errors, any problems that you might have had during those processes early and address them. The important thing is, is that post-occupancy can lead to good business benefits. If you a, a good performing building can have lots of different outcomes. So, for instance, user satisfaction. If people enjoy working in buildings, productivity would be better. If it's a retail store, customers will enjoy working there more, as well as the staff serving the store. There's also opportunities through low energy buildings to save money. Some of the best performing buildings can save 30, 40 percent on their energy bills. We've run an eight million pound program on building performance evaluation at the Technology Strategy Board. We funded 100 projects, so they got about 70 to 80 thousand pounds each. The biggest story that's starting to come out is that simplicity is what counts and managing the process throughout, right the way from design through to construction. Often the most complex buildings use the most energy. We're not planning to report the full findings until next year, September, then we can take a look across all of the buildings and have a look. But each of the buildings are starting to report on their own now and finding their own findings. So in about autumn of 2014, we'll report the complete set of findings. For the future, the Low Impact Buildings Programme at the Technology Strategy Board has just received a further 60 million of funding over the next five years. A, a primary focus of that funding will be on building information modelling. So helping the construction industry in terms of digital design and engineering, right through from the design process, helping people visualise what the buildings will look like before they're even constructed, helping during the construction process so we start designing the construction process so that we understand um, what materials are going to be moved in and what times, using self-supporting structures as well rather than lots of scaffolding which takes time to erect and cost. And then that then has its benefits right through to the occupation stage where you take the, the information that was uh, developed during the commissioning stage and use that in the occupation phase of the build. So one of the big, about probably between a third and a half of the 60 million will be on digital design and engineering, so BIM-led projects.